Hi everyone, let's go over my low and medium time frame bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the low time frame bullish scenario where we're looking for a three wave structure in an ABC towards the upside, where currently this wave B over here is bouncing in the most common target area for this white wave C and then an ABC, which is between the 1 and the 1.236 with a double bottom just below for maybe a liquidity grab and a move to the upside. But of course, price can already move to the upside because that depends on how we label wave a if this is a five three five wave move then the invalidation is taking this low over here you don't want to see it taken so then price continues but if this is a three wave move then you can get an a b that takes the double bottom and then a c towards the upside the result is kind of the same it's just that either this low will or will not be taken the currently most common target for wave C over here is between the 1 and the 1.236, which is between 27.4k and 28k. And what is actually interesting is what happened on the lower time frames yesterday. So we had this move up then the spike down and the spike down actually took this low. So then the question is is this a wave five? Is this ending a move towards the downside in a wave one, two, three, four, and then eventually a wave five? Well, the problem I have with that is if I pull a FIB from then the high of two to the low of this wave three, and I put on the golden pocket, then you can see the golden pocket has been hit. And for a wave four, the golden pocket is a rare target. So then a one, two, three, four, and then eventually a five to the downside, it makes it less probable that this high over here is a wave four. So that then makes us think, is this potentially the start of something, right? Is this potentially an A, B, C or a one, two, bigger move to the downside in a three? That is yet to be seen with what the price section does today. But it is interesting that we got that move to the downside. We basically wicked the low again. So this wick already grabbed the liquidity of the wicks over here. Then we moved up, stopped everyone out again. So everyone that went long over here got likely stopped if you put the stop loss below the low. And then the price is moving to the upside once again. Now with that liquidity grab, that could be enough for then already continuation to the upside. It is what's going to happen more locally and all the entry requirements that you have in your plan and your strategy that will decide if you're going to go long or not. But of course, a potential liquidity grab once more is still on the cards or continuation to the upside as the liquidity has been grabbed and then a 5-3 and then a 5 wave move to the upside. But if price is going to move to the upside, then we at least know and have an idea of what area to look for for potential resistance. Then on the little bit higher time frame, let's say this could result in a potential ABC, a 3 wave structure and then a wave A, 5 wave move, followed by a 3 wave in a wave B, and then a wave C to the downside. Can wave B already be in? Yes, wave B can already be in. The only problem that I have is that this wave B is incredibly short in time. If we take a trend-based FIP time extension from the low or from the high of A to the low of A over here, then you can see that this wave B is even shorter than the 0 0.236. And the 0 0.236 is a very, very rare target in general in time between different waves. So preferably, if we are going to find more downside, I prefer this. Of course, we can get a bit of a wick and then a move up, but I prefer price moving up for a wave B in this particular scenario to grab the double top that we have here as well, sitting at 27.4K and then eventually move to the downside in a wave C for then a wave A, a B, and then eventually get a C towards the downside. The invalidation for this scenario is if price is going to take the highs at 28.5K. In the more bearish scenario, then yeah, that's it. We're going to go down basically, right? So then this is the high of a wave B. I just explained it's an alternative, but this is then a wave A followed by a B. Then we get a C to the downside or potentially even more bearish, a one, two, and then a bigger three. But that is something I'm not looking at at the moment as that doesn't match any of my high time frame scenarios as well. So in this scenario, an ABC is better, but still this wave B is very short. So as you know, again, I prefer wave B to not yet be in if we are going to find more downside. However, if we look at the bullish scenario on, let's say, the medium time frame, then wave Y can already be finished. It is an option. And then a W over here, three wave in W, three wave in X. And then a potential A, B, C in wave Y. So instead of counting this as a five wave structure in a one, two, three, four, five, there is also the possibility to count this as an A, B, C, where C is very, very short compared to wave A, but the target, the, the where it bounced over here, fits perfect 
with an ABC scenario. You take a trend based ship extension from the high over here to then either lows, let's take the right low, the wick over here to then the high of wave B, put it on the zigzag wave C target area and you will see the one to one over here perfectly respected, right? For potentially an ABC as well. And if this is a nice three wave structure in an ABC where C is then very short in time, usually wave C takes a little bit longer in time than wave A. This one is much shorter, but it is possible. I've seen it more often, high volume, short C to wash everyone out and then eventually bounce towards the upside. That is definitely a scenario, but that could then be the end of a wave Y. And then a zigzag 535W, then we have any corrective structure in a wave X, and then another zigzag in an ABC 535 structure in then wave Y, creating a double zigzag big correction over here, where wave Y, one of the targets of wave Y is the 0 0.618, and this is a common target as well. The 1 to 1 and the 1 1.236 are also common targets, but the 0 0.618 is also a common target and has been hit. So that is why this scenario is alive. The 0 0.618 has been hit. Also, the 0 0.618 has been hit after the 0 0.236. Now, even though, you know, wave Y is then in after the 0 0.236, it is in before the 3A2, which still, for a wave Y, is very short. Usually wave W and wave Y also have a time relationship where wave Y, you know, tends to be like quite similar to a wave W, so ending maybe somewhere here, might be preferred, but it has to be a scenario on the chart from an Elliott wave perspective that wave Y is in. And then depending on what happens more locally with the push towards the upside, that is how we're gonna decide if this is potentially an ABC or if this is gonna be a wave one, two, and then a bigger three to the upside where we're not gonna find downside. Now, how do we know that? First of all, you don't want to see this low being taken. If this is a wave one, then a wave two, we now want to see a wave three towards the upside. The 886 over here acted as support. It is a rare target for a wave two. Most commonly it's the 0 0.5 to the 0 0.786, but the 886 is still a target. It is rare, but it is still a target for a wave two, but you don't want to see this low being taken. The moment this low is taken is the moment this scenario is invalidated and it is more likely that eventually we're going to find more downside. So basically what I'm saying is price is going to do this, then move up. That's nice, but then very likely wave Y is going to end somewhere bloops, over here because then you would expect still another move towards the downside. So actually taking this low or not is very, very important for what's going to happen in the upcoming week as well as we got some big news stuff coming. So in this scenario, wave two is very likely in as well with the uh, wicks that we got uh, yesterday, right? So the big move up to the upside, big move down, grabbing the liquidity again. And now we want to see a move to the upside and then a wave three. So what is the difference? What are we looking for? So if this is a wave three, you want to see, of course, a volume increasing while price is going to move towards the upside. Now, this is something that will happen probably throughout next week. We're on the four hour time frame. There's only so many four hours on this Sunday. So we might just slowly range somewhere over here. And then next week when the news hits, that's maybe when the volume kicks in. You want to see price moving up and volume moving up the same way. So volume increasing while price is going to increase to the upside, where if the WXY correction is in, then you want to see at least the high at 31k taken. That is a minimum, right? Like, and I'll explain that in the video tonight at 7 p.m. CET, where I have my high time frame and macro video coming, right? So you want to at see at least see that uh, 31k high taken, and then potentially that already being a way three, where the way three extensions go much much higher as you can see but the minimum target is the 1.618 at 28.8k so in this scenario the low is in and we want to see upside where if this is still part of a corrective structure and then a wave a b c then this yeah can be an a b c of course but then this move to the upside over here is going to be quite similar volume to this move so it's not going to be increasing volume to the upside and also wave c tends to be a bit more lazy so take a bit more time than this move as well while a wave three is usually very uh, very impulsive of course so that's quite a quite a difference and the more bearish scenario as mentioned is then that this is not yet finished so we could get an abc five three five wave move or B is already in, but that is still not preferred in my opinion. So then B is in and then you have a five, three and a five wave move to the downside. So we'll wait and see what happens there. And then CVD wise, we do have bullish divergences 
between the two lows so a higher low in price lower low on the cvd where the target is then going to be this high currently sitting at 27.4k but of course with the moves to the downside and the weird stuff going on over here some local cvds are priority in my book and then if we quickly have a look at the cvds more locally refreshing the page then what we're seeing over here is that you know price moving to the upside is this the 15 minute time frame uh, time frame moving towards the upside over here then we have a bit of a retracement and you can see cvd came came down quite nicely it didn't create bullish divergences with the wick low over here so if i look at the yellow line you can see uh, with my horizontal cursor line that the yellow line over here didn't go below my cursor line no bullish divergences and in blue the CVD almost got below my cursor line, as you can see, but still no bullish uh, divergence there locally. Uh, so we have to wait and see then if we are going to create, if we're going to find a bit more downside or not. Very, very locally. I do at least want to show you this before I end the video. We do have a naked point of control, which is, where's my folder? It's all the way up here now, of course which actually just been hit. So the daily naked point of control has been hit now at 25,650. That's actually interesting uh, because that was the basically only real support for potentially continuation down. Now, if I go to the five minute, let's have a look what's happening over here. On the five minute, we don't have bullish divergences and neither do we have there. And on the 30 minute, different time frames, different CVD divergences. So I quickly want to check over here. And over here, we also don't have bullish divergences. So of course, price can move to the upside. There's nothing that says it can't, but at least locally, the divergences are very, very neutral. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've done about the best trading indicator you can use, which is the CVD in my opinion. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.